Hi everyone, it's Christine here. So I'm progressing with part two of my Madame junk journal. So um, this is the cover which you would have seen in the previous video, which I'll put the link in the description box below. And um, so that's how it's come up. And I finished it off the back um, spine with one of my little um, paper book page buttons that I made. And um, so I'll put a link to those as well. It's got a little green butterfly, which I stamped and another little bit of um, chestnut ink colored um, writing stamp on it as well. So, and then I just inked around the edge with the chestnut color. So, so that's what it looks like. Hopefully that comes out all right. Um, so I've been getting signatures together, so I need three. So um, I've gone for neutral only because of what I'm thinking, how I'm going to use this junk journal. Um, neutral is probably best. So um, I made some pages out of the Reader's Digest pages and I've just stuck them together with like my own um, washi tape. It's just paper that I've put down the middle. Um, I will have to score that because um, that's quite quite thick. And then just tea dyed paper, envelope, tea dyed envelope. Uh, this is blue paper, um, blue copy paper that I tea dyed. And tea dye again and just um, some lined paper that I've torn up um, tea dyed paper and a doily that paper doily that I'm going to fold like that so then it will be a tuck spot and then tea dyed paper so it'll look like um, how is I going to do it I think this way once I fold everything together that way so once I fold it it's going to be looking like this so this is one of my digitals that I made so I'll put that link in the description box but firstly I need to just cut them down a bit and I'm not going to cut with scissors I'm just going to tear um, I'll show you what I mean by that make sure that they're all one end because this Reader's Digest this page is actually a really good size so um, for the book so if you see once I scroll that in It's actually a really good size because I didn't want to go right to the edge because that's where I've got you know I'm using elastic so I sort of wanted it to be like that so so this size is really good so I'll make all the papers that size and um, the tea dyed papers you'll see I'm, I'll make them just slightly taller just so it adds a bit of character to the pages that they're not all the same so and I like the idea of just tearing them I just need to get my glasses on And um, all these scraps I can use in other projects. So I sort of go possibly about a quarter inch above. Um, I'm only going by the bottom of this white 
um, whiteness here that I can actually see through the rule and that's the top of my um, Reader's Digest pages so and it doesn't matter if it moves as mine has um, okay so so I've got three signatures like that and I have done oops, the others Order. It's just slipped out everywhere. So now it's just a matter of folding them. So they're all the three signatures are the same. So, so it is a matter of just folding them. going to fold them in half I'm not going to press hard um, on the crease line love tea dye paper I actually use tea dye paper a lot in my my projects because I just love the coloring business name of these envelopes on here which I don't want to be seen so glue sticks they stop like um, screwing up and I'm not sure why that so I'm just going to put that there because it's neutral and I can I can use that. that there. Because it's neutral, it's okay because it fits in with everything else. Actually, that envelope, I might actually fold. So I've got the window all on one side. So it might just be a little just a little tap spot on the other side. And I've had to double check that to make sure it's the right size for the, um, the size of the paper. So that works out well. That's that. Loved how the blue dyed um, the blue paper came out when I dyed it. Like it's a really like vintage green almost. It doesn't even look bluish. I want the doily pocket. So how this is going to work is there's going to be a pocket on each side. So that'll look cute. And then this is the front of the signature. So 
so that's got that one. So what I might do is just go show you this one. Just put this in. Yeah, that looks really good. So that's going to look like that. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do a main cover yet, but I'll think about that. Um, I may do. I'll think about that while I'm folding these others. So I'm just going to go on ahead and do these other ones off camera and get those organized so that you'll see all three signatures together and I'll also think about um, what I'm if I'm going to do a cover or not <coughs> so I went ahead and I folded all the papers and I thought about covers so I've actually just printed out um, my digital, uh, the vintage pink floral papers. Um, I printed this page out on 160 GSM as the cover. And because that's the cover, I have moved that paper, which I'd already printed out previously, from near the doily, and I moved it in one so the same print wasn't too close together. So that's that one. Okay, so I need to move that. So it's now with the blue paper. So I printed it out on 160 tea dyed GSM paper. So when I do my batches of tea dye paper, I always make sure I'll put in some of the um, thicker card. So I just need to fix this one up now. So that one, that one, that one. That one and then that one. Now I'm also going to look at how I want the doily um, in each one. So I've got them so they're there like that. What have I done with this one? Yep, so that's right. And the envelope. Got that one like that. It doesn't really matter because I can move them around. So depending, like when I get to them, I can decide which way I actually want it to. to sit and the envelopes like that because once I've got them in here I can actually move the papers around depending on what I'm wanting to add to them so and that was a really good size um, that I've made it so that it's not like the paper isn't right up here and it's going to get damaged. It's actually quite a nice distance from either end. So let's put this one in. This is such a great idea. I've never made one of these before and I like how it how it all sits and you know, I can definitely move papers in and out depending on what I'm going to do when I make them so and that's the finished junk journal I really love that so and I've already got two collage papers that I made last year that I can I'm thinking I can even just add in onto a page so that's something that I'm looking at um, making this like a collage journal 
and so I can as I go along I can actually <clears throat> take the pages out collage them and then I can actually get them back in this is such a lovely idea um, that I've learned from Nina and I'm looking forward to filling it up <laughs> so let's have a look at this so it's gonna be I really love those I'm pleased that I, one Sunday morning I woke up and I just I had a really creative splurge I think and sat up in bed and made these papers so they're in my Etsy shop and tea dye paper I just love love doilies I think doilies add such a beautiful soft softness to it so these I can um the other side I can even move them up a bit higher if I want they don't have to be right down in line with all the other papers this one I can move up I can move it around and so that's the plain um sort of sheet that I have in my um, vintage pink floral digital paper set and that's the blue tea dyed the envelope tea dyed tea dyed paper plane this is the reader's digest book which I've um, took two pages and stuck them together with my own sort of homemade washi so that's the other side of the envelope with the window so that that'll be interesting how I'm going to decorate those again this can move up into the center doesn't have to be down the bottom so depending on what I'm going to use it for as to where I position that so Turned out really lovely. I really love this. So I want to use this as a collage junk journal where I can just look at it. I, I like the idea of just being able to look at it and seeing how pretty things are. So... even use that as a flip flip page out like that if I want to so. and then I love the use of lace so I might even be able to um, put that right to the edge of that page and see how you can get the lace showing And I can collage directly on that. But we'll see how we go. I can move them, move all the papers around. So um, it's going to be fun as we go along and collage each of these papers. I also did um, pink um, copy paper and I tea dyed it and it's come out such a dusty pink. It's gorgeous. Actually, I've got some close. Just one moment. Let That's the pink and this is like a cream that I've done as well so that's sort of like your colors your white your white copy paper blue pink and cream copy paper and it's just come out in such gorgeous colors that really suit the vintage um, theme so Really good. 
I'm really happy with this journal. I hope you have a go at making one. And um, that looks really nice together too. So it's even a good size even from here because like if you do lace, it's not going to protrude from the cover. It's actually going to, um, well, let's just have a look at this one. If we just slip that in. See how it's going to be quite a, actually, depending on, on what lace you use. So see how it's quite cute and it doesn't come right out past your cover. Hopefully you can see that. And when the book's open, when your journal's open, it's, that's what it looks like. So, yeah. So that's part two finished. And um, now it's collaging papers and adding them in, which is going to be the fun part. And sometimes the difficult part, because sometimes if you can get blockages and you think, oh my gosh, how... You know, how am I going to use this? You know, how am I going to collage this? What am I going to put on here? And so, and what theme and what colours? And yeah, so that's can be daunting, but you can become very creative. So, so thank you so much for watching. And um, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.